In the realm of contemporary thinkers, Joram Peterson is a name that resonates with many, conjuring images of charged debates, thoughtful lectures, and an exploration into human psychology. Today, I am going to weave a story out of a particularly rich text from one of his talks. This talk delves into the profound complexity of human behavior, our brain structure, and how we perceive and interact with our world. Peterson delves deep into the intricacies of the human mind, using the lens of post-traumatic stress disorder (PTSD) as a starting point to explore wider concepts. Let's journey through this talk, breaking it down section by section, to provide you. Dear listener, with a compelling narrative of what Peterson is sharing with us. You know, I te- treat people who have post-traumatic disorder or symptoms of post-traumatic disorder. And so, let's say they got post-traumatic stress disorder because, again, because a relationship collapsed on them suddenly, which is quite common. You know, they get betrayed or someone leaves them suddenly, and then they don't know what to do because. Especially if they're conscientious, because then they just tear themselves into pieces, trying to figure out what they did wrong to bring about that event. And the reason they're doing that is because they want to retool their perceptions and their actions so that the probability that they'll have the same experience again is minimized, and their mind won't leave them alone till they do it. And no wonder, right? Because if you fall into a big pit and you get really hurt, the first thing you should figure out is how to not fall into big pits anymore. And your mind is set up exactly for that. And so, what you do with someone who's having problems like that—so maybe they're waking up at the middle of the night obsessing about what went wrong—is you walk them through it. You do a situational analysis first, because one of the oversimplifications that people make—and this is especially true for conscientious people—is if something bad happened to me, I must have done something to deserve it. Now that's actually a pretty functional idea because it suggests that there are things about your behavior that you could change that would make the future better. But the problem is, is that say if it's the collapse of a relationship and you've been with that person for eight years or, or longer, well, you did so many things with them that the idea that you did something wrong pretty much extends to every single thing you ever did with them, and that's how are you going to fix that? And so that's part of the trauma. Actually, the, the, the trauma is 80 million snakes all at the same time. It's like, well, forget it. You don't have time to go through all that material. And so, the pain that follows such trauma can lead someone to incessantly question their actions, seeking to ensure they never face a similar situation again. This innate human response is drawn from a simple survival instinct. If you fall into a pit once, you learn to avoid it. Peterson highlights a common oversimplification: if something bad happens, we must have done something to deserve it. While this might help us improve, it can be damaging, especially in the aftermath of a long relationship. The trauma isn't just one event; it's a cascade of memories and emotions. Peterson introduces the idea of situational analysis. Rather than solely blaming oneself, one should look at various factors at play. Incompatibilities, especially in personality traits, can play a significant role in relationship dynamics. He suggests that instead of trying to change inherent characteristics, one should analyze situations and learn from them, aiming for better future interactions. Taking a turn from the emotional to the biological, Peterson delves into the complex architecture of the brain. With the hippocampus as the focus, he explains its role in constantly comparing our perceived world in our desired outcomes, thereby managing our responses to unexpected events. A tiny yet vital part of the brain, Peterson showcases its malfunction. Functionality, emphasizing its pivotal role in the various behaviors. Interestingly, he links this biological concept to the perception of art, illustrating how great art can make us see the world anew. There's all sorts of different structures in the brain that contribute to emotional expression, and they're not even in the same place, much less, much less composed of identical structure or function. So you know, we have these short hands that we use to divide up the world, but they're. They're awkward and untenable as the level of resolution increases. But anyways, I'm still going to go with motivation and emotion because it's a useful simplification. But you can see with the hypothalamus that there's all these, you know, complicated little subsystems in there. And then I showed you that video to show you just how complicated the subsystems are, all the way down to the really to the molecular level. How those little machines manage what they do is completely beyond me. You know, to call it clockwork when. Those little things that walk can walk over obstacles. It's like clockwork does one thing, you know, only. 
click, 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 click. That's all it does. No exceptions. This thing walks over obstacles to get where it's going. It's like, who knows what's going on down there. But it works well enough, so here we are, weirdly enough. Concluding his exploration, Peterson reiterates the incredible complexity within the hypothalamus, a microcosm for understanding broader human behavior. By taking us on a journey from molecules to emotions, he leaves us in awe of the intricacies of human existence. The feelings of regret, self-blame, and an incessant desire to know where one went wrong illuminates our innate human tendency to seek answers. This is not just a feature of heartbreak, it's a fundamental part of our survival instinct. Not everything is within our control. This acceptance is both liberating and essential for emotional healing. Much like our emotions, our brains isn't just an organ but a vast universe of connections, functions and mysteries. But in reality, it ties back beautifully to the beginning. How do our brain structures influence our perceptions, emotions and reactions? Moreover, the brilliance of Peterson's analogy between the brain and art is noteworthy. Just as we may overlook the nuances of our brain's functioning, we often lose the ability to appreciate the beauty in the mundane. In everyday life, artists through their work invite us to pause and marvel at the world, urging us to re-experience the wonder. This is an invitation to be present, to be more conscious and aware.